Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Lib Boldly with Sarah. Today we're going to talk about judgment. So go grab your journals because this is going to be a very in-depth conversation around the positive side of judging because yes, there is some good positive side to using healthy judgment and then also the negative connotation and the negative negative part of it. What happens when we misjudge or we overjudge uh, people, experiences, actions, all sorts of things. And then I want to give you four tips to judging less in your life, because so often we are quick to judge without taking a moment or a step back to really give this situation or person perspective, right? In being able to then judge less uh, in our own life. What happens on the other side of not judging so much? We actually experience peace, freedom. We have forgiveness for self and others when we are not judging. We can have a deeper, deeper, deeper level of understanding and being able to navigate through life in a way that is not so forced, but is more so allowing it to unfold the way it is intended for us, right? So go grab those journals and let's dive in. First of all, what brought up this topic of judgment? Well, for about the last four years now, I have been leading an online community called The Trail, and it is a group of women that started together the group's gotten a little bit smaller through the years only because it's become more intimate watching their evolution individually and as a group watching how they have transformed their life personally and professionally made decisions taken actions gone through divorce relationship changes professional changes career shifts It has been the coolest thing to witness. So we meet every month for about an hour to an hour and a half. And one of the conversations, the topics of conversation that they wanted to have was on judgment. What's interesting is when we started the conversation tonight, because we had our session tonight and we started our conversation tonight, one of the women, as we started diving into even the definition of judgment and the, how we feel like what our own definition of judgment is because everybody has a different perspective on the definition of a word based on their own life and experiences. And when we started diving into judgment, she was like, gosh, I guess I've never really thought about judgment in that way. Right. And I told her, I said, you know, what's interesting is when I wrote my, when I wrote my book, I uh, put in the book that people were talking about ego. I talked about ego in the book. And I was saying how I was taught never to lead with ego. And if there is a sentence that I wish I could take out of my book, it's that one. Because, and here's why. There is such a thing as healthy ego, right? And then there's the egoic nature that drives narcissism and, you know, sociopathic behavior, all of that. So when we look at, for example, ego, there's two different kinds of ego, right? And and having a good, healthy ego is really necessary, to proceeding in life in, you know, capturing your dreams, your goals, your aspirations. The same goes for judgment. Not all judgment is bad. We have to have a certain level of judgment in order to be able to gain perspective or shift perspective or to learn and grow from everything from our actions, our mistakes, uh, our experiences in life. Let me give you an example of a good, positive, healthy way of judging. So, so many of us, we have goals, we have aspirations, we have dreams. There's things in life that we want to do. In order for us to accomplish those things that we want to do, we have to be able to take a step back and judge where we're at right now in our own life. We have to take inventory. We have to be able to look at it from a different perspective and say, okay, judging where I'm at right now, am I happy? Do I feel joy? Am I feeling successful or abundant in my career? Am I bored in my life? We have to be able to take that step back and judge in a very honest way, looking in the mirror, right? Eye to eye, meaning my eye to my eye, looking at myself and giving myself 100% honest, healthy judgment on where I'm at right, where am I at right now and where do I want to go? This is just one example of using judgment in a very positive way. Another way. Okay, so last week's episode was on dating. I talked all about dating tips. When we are talking about dating, we have to be able to take a step back 
in judge where our relationship is with that person that we are caring about most. We have to be able to look at ourselves deeply and judge how are we showing up? And then also, how is that other person showing up? When we are in the beginning stages of dating, we judge flags. What is that red flag? What is that pink flag? Meaning that little warning flag, right? Not like a blazing red flag, but like, yeah, okay, this is one to look at. Or being able to judge what white flags are. A white flag meaning, wow, this person is really an amazing human being. And here are the the the, the white flags that I'm seeing along the way that shows me that they are an amazing human being, right? So good, healthy judgment can really be necessary in navigating our life in a way that we choose to to lead it, right? Now, when can it be too much? Well, or when can uh, judgment come across as a very negative way? Okay, so there are people uh, in life, right, that tend to jump to conclusions. (laughs) I'm sure we've all done it. And we jump to conclusions based on perhaps our own experiences or based on one moment in time with perhaps that other person. So I'll give you an example. Say that you are watching a parent with their child and maybe you don't agree with the way that they are parenting their child. This is just an example. And you start to put judgment on the parents. Just like, wow, that parent, they shouldn't be parents. They are they're yelling at their son or their daughter. They are, I don't know, being very short in their patience. And you start having this story that plays out in your head based on judgment in that one moment, that one time that you were seeing this parent with the child. Here's the thing though. This is only a moment in time. You don't know what led up to that parent perhaps losing their patience or, you know, not being able to control their child, for example, or or not being able to discipline their child, whatever it is. You don't know what is happening behind the scenes within that own parent's life, within that child's life, and within their relationship as a whole. And so being able to step back and ask yourself that simple question of like, wait a second, what don't I know? What do I know? I know this one moment in time. And then what is, what are the possibilities? What are the things that perhaps I don't know at this moment that could be causing this situation and and for me to judge in this way, right? And so that is an area where we sometimes, we jump to conclusions so fast, we judge so quickly that we don't allow ourselves to see humans always as humans in front of us because we judge so fast, right? And we all have a story. We all have days. We all have moments prior to the moment that we are having right now that uh, could be leading up to whatever is happening in our life or in that other person's life. So be very careful of that. Being able to step back and just like, wait a second here. This is, I'm blowing something out of proportion or I don't have the full story, okay? So now I wanna dive into how can we judge less? And this leads into this, right? How can we judge less in our life? First of all, on the other side of judgment, we have understanding. And when we can learn to judge ourselves less, when we can learn to not be so quick to judge others right away, we then are diving into that those, and we're really pulling back the layers on understanding ourselves more, understanding others more, having forgiveness, self-forgiveness, forgiveness for others, being able to gain a different perspective on our life, other people's lives, right? Because we're taking the time and the patience and the understanding to dive into the story of that other person, of that experience, or maybe even of ourselves and and learning how to self-judge a little bit less. So here's where I want you to pull out your journal and write these down, some tips, some really good steps to judging less. The first thing I say is distinguish between judging. Are you judging a person's person's actions or are you judging the person as a whole, that person as a whole? This goes back to everything happens in a moment in time. And so in that moment of time, if you are watching somebody go through something, you are literally only seeing that one action, that one moment. 
And so are you judging simply that action or are you judging that person as a whole? Where, what do you, being able to distinguish between the two is really, really important, right? Because a person has how many years that have led them to that moment in time? And you don't know what you don't know. So being able to pull it back and see it in that way helps you to gather together a different understanding and different perspective within that moment. Being able to not judge so quickly of that person and being able to see the action that is happening from a different perspective or a different place than you would otherwise. So that's the first thing. The second thing is ask yourself, what do I really know about this person that I am judging? What do I really know about myself when I am judging myself? We're so quick to self-judge, right? To go down that journey of shame and anger and sadness and like beating ourselves up over and over and over again for something that we did. Hello, I've done it a million times. Being able to pull back though and ask myself, okay, what do I really know about me? What do I really know about myself as a human being? that I am judging so harshly right now. Well, I know that I always show up. I try to with good intention. I always try to to show up as my best version of self. My, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not one to set out to hurt anybody or to be malicious or anything like that to myself either. And so, you know, how, what do I know about me and how can I judge myself a little bit less knowing that I do always show up with the best intention. The same goes for when you are judging other people, right? What do you really know about that person? Get to know them a little bit more, and I guarantee that you won't judge their actions in the same way. Maybe you'll actually judge them a little bit more because you find out that this person eh, is not in line with your with your values and who you are. Or maybe you will judge much less because you realize that that person is simply having a really hard day, Right? Okay, so step three, tip three, we have gone through number one and number two. Number three is reflect how it feels to be judged yourself. Because when we can understand what it is to be in another human's shoes a little bit more deeply, when we can try to put ourselves in another person's shoes uh, at that moment, we tend to not judge so quickly. We don't react, instead we respond. And we can look at everything from a 360 view instead of one small portion of the pot. Instead of just looking at the, I like being on top of a mountain when you look out and you only see the one view versus when you can fully turn around and see everything around you and take it all in before you make or pass that judgment in that one moment on that person. You know what it feels like to be judged. I do. I know what it feels like. And it sucks, especially when you're being judged on one situation, right? Or on one, you know, some some one thing that you did and you're, maybe you didn't show up as your full self in your business or as a leader or whatever it is on one particular day. Maybe you weren't feeling well on that one particular day. I just went through the flu and I'm telling you, I'm still feeling it and it's two weeks out. And so I'm not at 100% right now and I'm having to really give myself a lot of grace and self-compassion because I'm still recovering from the flu, right? And so being able to really pull back on that is key. The fourth thing is notice the negative impact. And this is really, really huge. Notice the negative impact of judging or judging, judgeness, right? Judging of yourself and your relationships, When you are seeing it for what it is, when you are seeing the negative impact that your judging is having on yourself, on others, uh, on your relationships, on your children, when you are judging too harshly on your children and you're not giving them enough space to really discuss, to have that open conversation or to talk about what it is that you are judging them on, their grades, whatever, you know, like, okay, I've got kids. I've got three boys. Every single one of them has had troubles in their in at least one class in their life. Every single one of them has gotten in trouble from the principal or the dean or whomever it is. I did too. I've gotten in trouble. 
And we know what it's like when we're not heard or, or when we're not, when that other person that's judging us doesn't allow themselves to actually fully sit with you and try to understand where you're coming from. We know what that's like. And we know what that does to the other person that you're judging because we've had it happen to us. And so being able to truly sit back and say, okay, what is the impact that my judging is having right now on my relationship with that other person or that, that my judging is having on that person or on myself, right? Individually. Being able to see that and sit with it is a really big thing because it'll give you a deeper understanding of, wow, maybe I should have a little bit more empathy and compassion instead of just diving right to that space of judgment. So those are the four things that I would uh, really encourage you to sit in on in order to judge less and to bring more compassion, understanding, forgiveness in your life uh, so that you can lead a life filled with freedom, filled with peace and how you choose. I'm going to tell you that being able to step back out of my marriage, when I went through my marriage, right? And when I was coming out of it and went through divorce and being able to sit with myself, because I beat myself up so much coming out of that. I was so hard on myself. I was so codependent. And I beat myself up for not listening to myself more along the way. Because had I have done that, I do believe that I would have made different decisions that have impacted my life in a more positive way much sooner in my life. So I was 40 when I found everything out. I'm 50, almost 51. So this is we're going on 11 years. And I'll tell you that having compassion on the other side of judgment, having empathy has transformed me as a mom as a partner, as a friend, a daughter, as a leader, as a guide, as a speaker, as an author, it's transformed everything about my life because I'm not judging myself on my past. Instead, I learned I'm having fierce self-compassion, choosing to do differently in my present, breaking those patterns of the past so that I can create a future that ultimately how I want to live out the rest of my life, right? So judgment can be really good because we learn through our patterns. We can judge uh, what our patterns are. We can judge what our goals are and how we choose to proceed. And, And it's really important to be able to learn also where we place our judgment, where we place our energy when, when we are judging and being able to shift it into fear, self compassion, empathy, so that we can grow and do better is huge. We can be better as humans. So let me know how this works for you. Please dive deeper into this conversation of judgment with me. Share this podcast. Please rate, review, subscribe, share this podcast on your platforms. Make sure that you tag me. And then also respond to the emails that I send out as well. Please uh, send me an email, sarah at sarah And let's continue this conversation on judgment together, especially in the comments. Go into the comments and share, what do you think about judgment? And where can you use it a little bit more in a positive way? And where could you judge less too? Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for being here. I love you. And I am just so excited to see where you take all of this into your life too. Have a beautiful day.